The Soybean School on RailAirCulture.com is brought to you by High Stick NT, Cruiser Max Beans, and Pride Seeds. Here you can see this injury in soybeans. We got these long, narrow, elongated leaves. What's the word that we use in weed science to describe that type of injury in soybeans? Anyone? If you see this, what, what word uh, do we use in weed science to describe that? So the word that uh, we use is uh, leaf strapping. If you have this kind of injury in soybeans, which herbicide group would you think of? Which herbicide group would you think of if you have this leaf strapping in uh, soybeans? Anyone? So if you have this in uh, soybeans, it's typical of the group four, right? Something like uh, 2,4-D. The reason why I was interested in it is because 2,4-D is simply the best herbicide applied pre-plant in soybeans for the control of glyphosate resistant giant ragweed. This tank mix has been used for the past 20 years in neighboring U.S. states. It's been registered in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana. Farmers have used it successfully for the last 20 years. It is not registered in Ontario. However, we have submitted a minor use registration to the Pest Management Regulatory Agency to get this herbicide registered or this tank mix registered in the province. It's simply the best. If you have glyphosate resistant giant ragweed, the best treatment is a Roundup 2,4-D applied pre-plant. We did two things wrong. We did not follow the proposed label directions. The first thing on the label says the uh, maximum use rate will be about a half a pound per acre or 500 grams per hectare. We applied it at twice the label rate to uh, simulate a spray overlap in the field. Secondly, we did not uh, follow the seven day pre-plant interval. We actually planted our soybeans and then the next day we applied Roundup plus 2,4-D. My question for uh, you, if you see this injury in soybeans, do you think that this will, will result in a yield loss in soybeans, if you have this type of leaf strapping? Anyone? Not necessarily. Excellent, I'm glad you said that. So this gentleman said not necessarily. We've done about 10 experiments where we looked at the tank mix of Roundup plus 2,4-D applied pre-plant in soybeans. And uh, in all of the uh, trials that we've done, we don't always get this leaf strapping. I'll say that right away. Sometimes we see no injury. Even where we have seen this leaf strapping, as you can see, the new soybean leaves, pretty nice. The plant recovers. And most of the time, we don't have any impact on yield. The second part of the uh, number two is we also look at Roundup plus MCPA, just because it was another group four herbicide. And we had almost little to no injury where we applied it pre-plant in soybeans. So uh, once again, I'd like you to imagine that all of you are big farmers. You're really good farmers. You're aware of the fact that we have glyphosate resistant giant ragweed in Canada flea bean in the province. And therefore, you want to have multiple herbicide modes of action in the tank, right? All of you guys are busy. You don't like to use the two-pass program where you put down a pre-residual followed by glyphosate uh, post-emergence. You choose to use a post-tank mix with other modes of action in the tank. So you just finished spraying your Roundup Ready uh, corn. You didn't clean the tank out properly. You sprayed your Roundup Ready soybeans. And this is what you noticed a week later. So if you look at the uppermost trifoliate on this plant, how would you describe that injury? Anyone? Just one word. Thanks. So if you have white bleaching in any plant, which herbicide group would you think of? If you have white bleaching in any plant, which herbicide group would you think of? 28. 28, it's actually 27. John, they changed the numbers on you. It used to be 28. So it's the group 27 herbicide, it's the HPPD inhibitors. However, if you look at this plant more closely and you flip over the leaf, what do you notice on the lower side of these leaves of this soybean plant? For the guys that are close by here, what do you see on these leaves, on the lower side of the leaf? 
It's not a trick question. What do you see? How would you describe the veins? Perfect. So you have reddening of the veins. So now you know that this farmer has used a group 27 and a group 2 herbicide for residual weed control in his corn. He didn't clean the tank properly and he sprayed his uh, soybeans. My question to you is, is what tank mix partner did the farmer use in his Roundup Ready corn? He didn't clean the tank properly. This is the injury he got in his soybeans. So it's a group two and a group 27. Yes. Excellent. So uh, John said it was VOSH G3, and he's exactly right. Remember, VOSH G3 has two active ingredients in it. It has a group 27, Tembotrione. That's what you add to the tank to give you residual broadleaf weed control. If you get injury, you get white bleaching from all the group 27s. And then VOSH G3 has another active ingredient in it. It's a thion carbazone methyl. The reason why you add thion carbazone methyl to the tank in VOSH G3 is to give you residual grass control. And if you get injury in your soybeans, you get this reddening of the veins on the lower side of the leaf. So that is uh, the answer for number four is VOSH G3. Is that going to hurt you? Yeah, I, don't, I think these are going to be stunted for a long time. If you saw them in the field, John, boy, there was a pretty big difference, and i got to be careful in terms of which examples I use. But if you compared the untreated soybeans, boy, they were much bigger than the ones where we, you know, had the uh, tank contamination. So uh, the next one, once again, I'd like you to uh, use your imagination. This is now a no-till uh, soybean field. The uh, soybean field that you have at home, you have glyphosate-resistant Canada fleabane in it, and you know that you have to control your fleabane before the beans come out of the ground, or you're going to be behind the eight ball all summer long, right? And so you uh, planted your soybeans, you put, planned to put on your glyphosate tank mix the next morning, it rained, it rained again three days later. By the time you could get into the field to uh, spray your soybeans, the soybeans had already broken through the soil surface. You know that you're going to have almost no yield if you don't control your Canada flea bane, and you decide to spray anyways, even though it's too late according to the label recommendations. So uh, if you were in the field, you would notice that the beans are really stunted. You've reduced the stand. And the beans that have survived, they're variable in height. My question to you is, is what tank mix partner did you add to glyphosate? You put it on too late after the beans had broken through the soil surface, and that's the type of stunting and injury you got. Remember, it's glyphosate-resistant Canada fleabane. What's the best treatment for glyphosate-resistant Canada fleabane in Ontario? Anyone? Pardon? First rate. First rate is the best post-emergence, but in terms of a soil applied, burn down before the beans come up. It's Roundup plus Aragon, right? So Safufenicil is just excellent for the control of uh, glyphosate-resistant Canada fleabane. And he used the right tank mix, he just didn't get it on in time, and that's the injury that he got. Thank you.